Okay, here we go. We do this live in real time. See how my computer is not glitching like beforehand, guys. Are you guys gonna give me a uh, a pat on the back? Are you guys gonna tell me that um, I did a good job because I've managed to get a computer that doesn't glitch when I try and stream? Look, guys, I can search for things and stuff. Look how crazy that is. Come on, you're gonna load, brother. Cool, there we go. It's coming up. Boom. Come on, pod. Baby. Much stuff. Many stuff. Some of the top stuff. So if you already. Yeah, we're good to go, Chin. Look yep. at us. Just the boys. It's just the boys. The original back. team's back together. And, and this is a good way to start this because we're going to. I'm calling this podcast the Hammer of Truth. And in and I'm I've, I'm going to start this off by by saying a couple of things. Brian, serious. Yeah, because because I believe when the chaos hits, you tell the truth. I've always been honest with everybody, all the fans, and everybody who listens. Uh, Bobby uh, Bobby Lee is somebody I love very much. We both do. Yes, but Bobby, but people have been talking on. Uh, he he went online and he he went on and talked about somebody who spoke to him in a very rough, bullying manner, okay? That wasn't anybody but me. I'm the guy. I'm the one who did it. Not not Chris, not Theo, not Sam. Not it was me, me yeah. okay? And the re, and now, now, now. How disgusting. How disgusting. You'd think this man has enough things to worry about. Again, this is a thing. I actually like Brian, bruv. I think he's absolutely, legitimately might be one of the funniest stand-ups within that crew, you know, within the JRE Extended Universe. He might be one of the funniest ones. Legitimately funny, like, on a show, on a panel. Like, he's legitimately a funny human. You can imagine bumping into him in a bar and absolutely dying you know, crying with laughter with how funny he would make it, you know, and somebody you kind of want to keep in contact with or whatever it may be. And he has these crazy allegations against him, right? The way it transpired also was absolutely comedic, to say the least. The fact that he threw flipping Leah under the bus when he got accused of diddling kids. Only a couple of weeks later, or however many days it was later, to then get it exposed that he may be allegedly had raped somebody, sexual harassment and stuff with store assistants, propositioning people, like crazy stuff coming out, probably worse you'd imagine than being alleged of being somebody that's maybe keen to hit on girls that just turned 18, whatever it may be, it's still awful, it's like kind of trying to judge between the two worst things, but god damn it man, oh yeah yeah, but let's, let's, let, let's just hear him play, I just, I just can't understand that person being a person that's trying to tell you to flip in you know, to get your girl in line and to threaten you with Joe Rogan. Like, oh, awful people. Now, here's the second thing I want to say. Bobby is 100% right in his anger at me, in his, in how he felt, and I'm 100% wrong. I take full fucking responsibility for the way I spoke to him, which was wrong. There's no excuse, okay? And, and now I will give you, now having said that, let me say it again. And this is what I said to Bobby. I, uh, Bobby, if when I think did you, it, when did you talk I to spoke him? to Bobby, I tried to speak to him after you spoke to Kalila. When I spoke to Bobby, I said to him on the phone, I believe you. And then I thought, I don't know Kalila. I thought that she was, and, and, and let me just say this. And I'm going to, I'm going to explain this, but I want to first own up to everything that I did. Cause what I did at the end of the day, the way I spoke to Bobby, who's somebody I love who didn't deserve the way I, nobody deserves to be just attacked. And I'm going to tell you where I was wrong and I'm going to get specific, but let me start once again by saying me, I'm the guy. Okay. I take full responsibility. I was wrong. I said this to Bobby. I called him up and Bobby read me the riot act. I think if he had been in front of me, he would have fucking punched me and, and he's justified. And I said, Bobby, you're absolutely right. I apologize. I was wrong. And the, where I was wrong was this. I didn't give Bobby the benefit of the doubt. I didn't ask him first. I didn't really gi give him the respect to say, hey, dude, is what I'm seeing true? So let me get into that. Um, 
I, th- this had nothing to do, nothing to do with you and the Kalila thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing. This had, I, I don't get involved in that. I wasn't there. I don't get involved yeah, with any co- of that. It, it, was, it, it just happened to let. It, there was it, something else. So I want to make uh, a Hold on real quick. The, with the timeline, with the Kalila stuff, and then what you're going to refer to, you're looking about three to five weeks yes. difference. I did not Coincidence. know. I did not know. I, I, you never talk about it. And it did, you know, this we're very close, but think mm-hmm. about this. I didn't know that for six years you've been getting crazy, not just hate. There is a difference, guys. Fuck off. Fuck off. Are you for real? They're going to try to explain away. Nah, no way. Am I, am I about to hear what I'm about to hear? They're going to start scolding people online who are trolling him because he's a bullshit human being. And not try to tr- <clears throat> try to apologize for the horrible thing that he did to somebody he rec- he he regards as a friend. All right, let's just go. Let's just go. Between hate, between making fun of somebody, and threats, threats and harassment, long term harassment, and physical threats against somebody's family interference in someone's business and trying to destroy someone's business that is there is a very big difference between real physical and cyber threats and 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 uh and actual harassment i'm sorry i'm pausing it for so much no way are they trying to play victim are they trying to play victim guys no way no way. So what they're trying to just, they're trying to say Brendan slid into Kyla's DMs and told Annie to go for a drug walk because he was getting trolled. Because people said they don't think he's funny. Because people think he's undeserving of his success because he's only friends with Joe Rogan. That's why he did these things. No way. Brian stepped in. So Brian stepped in there to defend his boy because what? He was getting trolled online and he should be allowed to slide into anyone's DMs he wants to. It's a free world. It's a free country. Okay. Calm, Agostino, calm. Nah, this is insulting my intelligence. This is insulting my ability to deduce stuff in real time. This is like, what kind of apology is this? Like, what world do you live in where this is an apology? Okay, let's just give them a chance to speak because I'm doing too much here. Long-term harassment and just hate and people making videos. That's Criticism, all good. Yeah, that's all fine. good, dude. No, that's, that's that's the internet. That's that's the internet. But what I deal with? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I don't talk about it with and when I so when So what happens, guys, is when you have a legal matter, when it becomes actually physically dangerous, or at least that would be the... When I look at it, that's a very, the amount of shit you take is actually dangerous. Correct. It's dangerous. Correct. There are people that are not, they're not, this is not satire. This is not hate. This is not a hater. This is not uh, somebody being, you know, funny and it's out there. There's some funny hate out there. You know, I, I look at it, but we're talking about actual th- illegal activity. Correct. So what you do in that situation after six years, when it gets crazy and scary is you hire professional legal counsel and professional can I to say, deal with this. Can I say something? Yes. <clears throat> so uh, obviously I don't, I don't talk about the the negative stuff. I and you you know me better than damn anyone. It, I anyone. would say anyone. Your, yeah, your, your brother knows you better. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, you're up there. Maybe. But you know I I always look at life uh, as the glass half full. Always. It's just yeah. my nature and I know that stuff is out there and I've always been privy to ignore it. Obviously, you know, especially the way I look and having the careers that I've had, it, it's going to trigger people. And I get all that. I 100% get all that. And I'm sorry, I can't do anything about that. But then, you know, it gets to a certain point, And when it, they step over the, the boundaries of, criticism well when it gets to your physical safety correct. and your family's physical safety but but and that you know, and, that, you know and, and that for sure but then also going after my businesses companies yes. i'm associated with yes. then then you're talking about a legal activity but then but then even with all that i've never brought it up to you guys 
Ever, man. Look, ever. I, I've never but heard the, the about beat. it. Ever. I didn't hear about ever. it until until it got so crazy that you had to ever. I, it. It, but it, it got so crazy. And the way it works is one of the reasons I'm at where I'm at, whether you think I'm successful or not, that's up for debate, is I surround myself with much smarter people. You, Mark, Kat, Jen, everybody in here is smarter than me. I'll give you that. That's fine. People outside of this that work and have this engine going, my career going, are much smarter than me, whether my business manager, my agents, my managers. I constantly surround myself with smarter people. I don't deal with any of that stuff. My, being a stand-up comic, and you know this better anyway, is so tough. It's so tough. Never ends. So my energy goes to that and my kids. That's it, man. Yes. For me to get notified that some illegal activity is going on and that I should do something about it, it has to be so bad. To the point, so bad that this account got alerted. So let me hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish this because it's very but, important. But, but let me but, but let me say this too. I know I'm 6'4, 250 pounds. 255. I know I'm 255 pounds. I know I look like this stuff doesn't bother me. It hurts my feelings, man. It always has. To say the it least. It always has. To say the least. I don't talk about it. Yeah. Nobody wants me to come on here and talk about, you know, how my feelings are hurt because that's not the masking thing to do. But I'm telling you now, so all you guys know, it hurts my feelings more than you know. And that's why I'm not on social media. I didn't leave social media because you don't think I want to see my friends and family and other comics and peers post stuff and stuff like that. No, I, I love that stuff. I left because it was With all due respect, we don't give a fuck. No one gives a fuck. Nobody gives a fuck with all due respect. How is it not how are they not able to just apologize, say they're sorry profusely, declare they're gonna try and do better, and then just move on? What is this conversation? Now he's telling us about how he's, even though he's a big guy and he weighs a lot and he's tall and he can fight, it hurts him. And it, we know it hurts you. You basically turn into an alcoholic overnight because of the stuff people say online. It's a, it's a nonsense. You, you, he used to brag about not drinking and all of a sudden he's drinking whiskey at seven in the morning when he's doing a flipping podcast. We know it hurts you. Clearly it does. It, it would hurt most people if you've got 60,000 people on the internet telling you that you're crap at your job consistently every single time. Of course, with some of it being true for what they're saying, of course it's going to hurt you. But come on. This isn't about you, brother. The whole point why this started was because you flipping tried to slide into the DMs of a colleague, someone that you work with, a peer who was in in a relationship, especially you know when it comes to Kyla. Annie clearly wasn't interested. Cool, that happens. You swung in the miss. She kind of got annoyed about it because it made her feel like she was, you know, a cheap slag or a cheap lay or something. Just apologize, brother. It happens. We all try and swing and a miss. Sometimes you slide in someone's DMs and they're not interested. It happens all the time. Cool, whatever apologize and move on what is this nonsense bro so toxic it was so evil that i don't want to subscribe to anymore and a lot of people can handle social media god bless you man i wish i could i'm too sensitive so hold and that I, thought. I know because i look like this you yep. guys think it's okay and doesn't bother me yes it so, really hurts my so feelings. this is where so this is what happened so when i saw the evidence, people who are professionals that they said there is long term harassment and essentially, you know, more than just more than just hate coming from X, Y, Z. When I saw I didn't make this stuff up when I saw with my own eyes that X, some of that long term X harassment was coming from the Tiger Belly Hub. OK, and that's what I saw with my own eyes. When I saw that, I went into protection mode. I'm a very protective person. That's my brother. I might be too protective, and we're going to get into that too. I might, I've been too protective probably. It's not my place to be protective. It's not my place to say this, and it's going to come across rude because I love the guy. What about protecting your family, brother, when you got accused of what you got accused of? Did you protect them? What about protecting your friends when they got accused of what they got accused of and you most likely was in the vicinity when that stuff happened? What about that? What is this nonsense that they're talking about? Like, what is this? 
I don't know if they're insulting our intelligence or if this is legitimately how they feel. So what, he got presented with evidence about the Tiger Belly sub being responsible for the Fire and the Kids subreddit or Bobby being responsible for it, didn't question the information he was given and immediately called and flew off the handle and ripped into Bobby Lee, who is known longer than Brendan. Are you having me on? Are you having me on? I don't know, man. This this is legitimately one of the... This is probably worse than what it's ever been before. This is worse. They should have just probably left it and ignored it. This would have been better. This is like... This is even doubling down. What is this? What someone said? Base. What someone said? Base here. And now says never apologize. Dude. Always have, it's true, yeah. Base, dude. You're right. This is narcissism to the 10th degree. <laughs> And then, have you noticed, Brendan keeps saying, mentioning stuff like, I know you guys think I'm a big, tough guy and it doesn't hurt me, but it does hurt my feelings. A little a little um, humble brag there. Big, tough guy. Reminding you of my power, my strength, my mass. Fuck off. Absolute cunts, the lot of them. But I am. I'm a ride-or-die fucker. Now, I, so what I did was I went into protection mode, I saw red, and I assumed the worst about Bobby and about Kalila. After speaking to Bobby, I realized, I really believe that he has nothing to do with it. I don't think he even knows anything about it. I believe him. And I said that on the phone. You just I said, said on the phone. I said, I believe you, Bobby. And what, and what, and I, then, and what I tell you, B, when I spoke, and then within you the talk, first five minutes. Hold on, let me do it. Let me, do it. Let me handle yeah, it. Go ahead. Then you spoke to Kalila and yes. you called me right away and you said, dude, I believe her. Mm -hmm. I don't think Kalila or Bobby have anything to do with this. Mm -mm. So then what I did was I called Bobby. This is, this is, I don't know, a week ago, more than that, or 10 days ago. I called Bobby. He didn't answer. I called him the next day. He didn't answer. And I got it. I was like, He's, he must be so pissed off at me. He must have been so, so pissed off. Because once again, let me say this. The way I spoke to Bobby is unacceptable. The way I spoke to Bobby, and he said something to me that, re, that I, I have, I'll never forget. He said, I've been bullied by guys like you my whole life, and it stops now. I'm not a bully. But I, but if he said that, he was fucking right. He was. You are a bully, bruv. <laughs> Didn't you try to silence the flipping husband of your rape accuser because they were calling comedy clubs and trying to get your shows cancelled? That should be the least of your worries. You'd imagine if some people were in that situation, they'd be tracking you down. Again, no doxing, no threats of violence and stuff. They'd be doing far worse things then just calling up a club and telling them, hey, would you really, should you really be booking this person? I'm not a bully. Guess, guess what? <laughs> right. I own it. I was outside myself. And when you fuck up and I fucked up like that, I'm going to take ownership. Okay. It doesn't matter how angry I was. It doesn't matter that I was protecting him. It's like, it's like when I, I thought I was thinking about this. Sometimes you don't, you don't get a pass. It's like a guy who beats his wife. And then you go, you beat your wife. And the guy goes, I know, dude, but she makes me so angry. Not an excuse. That's not right. Not a fucking excuse. But to, so I gotta to be fair that. to yourself, I, I appreciate well, you on NBA. I'm sure they appreciate it. But you've always, you've always defended me, and I've also always defended you. Yes, it's what we do. It's man. what I do, dude. I, I go to the mat. I'm, I, you know, you, you know, we've been in situations, even physical situations, where there were a bunch of very dangerous people, and I was yeah. like, you know, and you were they, down. They were. I was down. I wasn't they, down. I know. You were. They were real guys who you were afraid were going to fight you yes. or come at you, and I said, hey, dude. I, I'm, I, for me, I'm, I'm needing yeah, me down. with you, motherfucker. Yeah. I, I, I'm not a tough guy, but I'll, I'm, I'm not leaving your side. And I We're reciprocated going. that when I know. You, you went through your shit. So that's how it is. That's what we do. That's how, that's yes. what we do. Yes. Okay. Doesn't mean I handled it right. I didn't. Once again, once again, I'm going to say this to what I said to Bobby. Bobby, you are 100% right. I was 100% wrong. Okay. Well put, B. But I also think it's fair to say, so I, I don't think, show you I don't think we handled any of this right. No, and no, that, I was that, too upset. And that was, I was so upset. I, I was, I was so, I was so. And, and I said I to him, I said, "Call me, buddy." Wanted to apologize. Mm. I said that <laughs> April 29th, 29th, um, or twenty fifth. Yeah, twenty eighth. I'm old. I can't read. I, April twenty fifth, twenty eighth. I said, or fifth. I said at two fifty one. I said, "Call me, buddy." Wanted to apologize. Okay, and then I, and here I, I really am sorry. 
I said, then after that, I said, I, after we spoke, after we spoke, I said, I'm a text. I really am sorry, Bobby. You're justified. And I was wrong. No excuses. I love you. And I wish you well. I'll always, I'll also make it up to you one day. If I can, you'll see. That's what I said. Those are my texts to Bobby. You guys go back how many years? I love him. For Matt TV? I love how him. How long? I love him. And, and he didn't deserve it. And, and, and but, 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 I yeah. had to live with that. I was, I was being protective over you. And I, and I saw red because I, because I had seen, I had been steeped and I had seen how horrible this stuff was. But, but, I'd seen the threats. I'd seen the physical mm-hmm. dangerous, mm-hmm. The, the, the difference between hate and, and true harassment and, and violence. And and I and I and I and I guess I went a little crazy. But to 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 be fair, again, I'm not <laughs> condoning. And uh, you know, and obviously, we both apologized the way you spoke to Bobby. But you know, I, I think if anybody saw that kind of abuse and the negativity, and then for their team, I'm not saying Bobby and Clyde, for them to be associated with it. I was so hurt. You don't understand. I know that because and so was I. Because I understand. And I'm so relieved when I found when I when I believed when you him. Believe it. And yeah. you know, Bobby and I spoke. I apologized and he ap- accepted my apology, but he also said, I don't want to talk to you, dude. And that, that, That's and fair. I deserve it. That's fair. I hope someday I can, I fucking hope someday I might see him in, at something. I hope when I see him, I'm, I, maybe I can hug him and hold him until he forgives me. Or maybe I can, or maybe I can make it up to him. I was like, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe Bobby, if Bobby, maybe you could tattoo something on me and, and that way we can be friends. Whatever I got to do. Th- this whole thing know? has gotten out of control though, because there's love between uh, I love us, Bobby and he doesn't Kalila. love me and he doesn't. And I get it. I, I fucking hurt him. And, yeah, and, I, I just and, think it was mishandled all the way around. It's gotten to the point where we have to address it, which, you know me, I don't like addressing this stuff. The world to yeah, me is too positive. Yeah, but sometimes you have to tell the truth. And when I fuck up, I own it. Uh, when I fuck up, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have any problem telling the truth. And I don't have any problem, you know, uh, owning up to and facing up to when I, and, and I, when I am outside myself. No, and I appreciate that, B. But, I, but I also think, you know, and I'm going on Tiger Belly to address it, too. It's like... And I think Bob and Clyde will also own up. And Clyde said this because, you know, their email is associated with this and there's other stuff associated with well, this Well, it's an account. ongoing investigation. It's an ongoing investigation. And I will say this, guys. I will say this, too. And this is what I heard from what I, what I can only accept as a reliable source. I'm not a tech guy. I don't do this stuff. No, I don't know anything about this. Yeah. But what I heard reliably from what I believe is a reliable source is since we have confronted them. And I'm, I'm not saying that Bobby or Kalila know anything about this I don't or have do. any, I truly believe they uh-uh. don't have anything to do with it, but somebody <laughs> on their team does. Well, it, the harassment, the posts stopped from that account and that account got changed and that's going to be brought up on tiger belly. Yep. Okay. And we're just being honest. This drama, I, I'm way too old to deal with it, but, but I Me fucked too. up. And so once again, here's what I have to say. I'm the guy. Direct your hate at me. I take full responsibility. Bobby, I love you. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I was 100% wrong. You didn't deserve that. I should have given you the benefit of the doubt. I should have spoken to you first. How the fuck did I think a guy as sweet as you, as special as you, as giving as you, as funny as you, would ever do something like that? I, I, how would I think that? I got fucking deranged. I was listening, and I, I didn't do my due diligence i didn't which is stop which is thing. unlike you it's unlike me but, uh, but also you but, but i was so but, traumatized but to be fair, Brendan, we i was both, so fucking traumatized because i've never told you about it but then i saw I it, it. I, I got I scared it's, it's awful I, I got scared dude, dude. I and I, when i get scared bubble. i fight i know you do you know, I, I know i'm, you I'm not i'm not, i don't i don't i don't fucking back down I'm, I'm gonna fight but here, here, and, and, here's but, the way you gotta be careful about how you fight agree but here's the way this thing ends is there's obviously love between us and tiger belly and I'm going to go on there and say my truth and they're going to say how we hurt them and that's fine and hopefully we can squash all of it. And even Kalila goes, all right, well, if we find out who it is, what do you want us to do? And this this goes for anybody out there. I, I told Kalila and Bobby, I just want to stop. I, I want nothing else. I'm, there's no legal action. There's no threats. There's no I, never I just want yeah, to there, stop. There's a, there, I will have to say this too. I have to say this. I... I in the midst of my anger and my, my hurt and the way I was speaking, and I know Bobby feels differently because of the way I spoke, I would never, ever do anything to him, ever in a million fucking years. Never. Not physically and not career-wise or anything. Neither never. one, no. But it doesn't matter, man, because I got to own what the fuck I did and how roughly I spoke. Don't remember all the details, but I was mad no, and I was upset yeah. and I was protecting my friend. Yep. This is a teaching moment for anybody younger. Listen, take a minute. 
when you're really upset, when you feel like you're justified, when you feel like you're being attacked, take a fucking minute. Think. Think. I'm way too old to have behaved the way I did. I'd say take longer than a minute. But take longer also, than a minute. I think the and give your friends the benefit of the doubt, especially someone as wonderful as Bobby. Yeah, sweet as Bobby. And uh, I hope someday I can I can I can mend that friendship, but I don't deserve it right now. Yeah, I'm and I'm gonna talk about it to Bobby today and just I ho hope hopefully so. I, I can him. be the guy that connects you guys and get you guys back together. Yeah. But 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 I also think too is excuse me? Did we hear that right? Brendan is gonna be the UN. He's gonna try and mend the 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 chasm that exists now between Brian Kelly and flipping Bobby Lee. Did I hear that correctly? Brendan is going to come out did being the hero? <sighs> this is why in the beginning of the show I said I'm, I'm, I'm fed up with this. I'm done, man. I can't do this anymore. These people are so garbage, so toxic, that it legitimately bums me out that these humans exist and they have kids and they have families and people that depend on them and successful careers and shit. And they're genuinely horrible people. Horrible people. This whole thing started because one person was a creep to other people, right? To a female side of things. Just apologize for that and keep it moving. What is all of this nonsense? This isn't even, this isn't even doubling down. This is like moving of the goalposts in like a mad way. I've never seen this in my entire life. They've completely missed a point. And what is this investigation? What did they find out? That there's a subreddit that exists that takes the piss out of Brendan every single day. Okay. Welcome to the internet. Welcome to 2015 or whenever that thing started. They they think this one account that comes from what they, they're now alleging or su suggesting the idea that there's somebody that works for Tiger Belly, an intern, a producer, some whoever's associated with that, that team who uses their Wi-Fi to log on to the fire and the kid and leave hurtful comments on the page. What, alongside 60 plus thousand other people? So you're going to shut that one account down that's linked to Tiger Belly. How about the rest of them? You're going to go after everybody else? You're going to go after Mick Spitfire and them, man? Is that what you're going to do? Good luck. Do these guys not know how the internet works? And I want to see these. What are these threats that made Brenda, Brian so angry that he was willing to legitimately throw away his entire friendships and, you know, threaten violence to somebody he's known for many years, more so than he was willing to stand up for his wife and all that sort of stuff. But hey, we don't want to speak about that because none of our business. But he was going to, for, he was going to go to the nth degree to support his guy, Brendan, Big Brown. What is this evidence that they found? Someone tell me what the evidence was. What was it? What was it? Was it standard stuff that people say to you all the time? Bomb threats, they're gonna, I'm gonna see you here. I'm gonna jump you there. Like, so what? It's internet shit. Who cares? Do they really, do you guys honestly think they hired a PI to, 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 to get to the bottom of this? <laughs> that is so lame. This is expert deflection, though. This is, we have to give Brendan and Brian a lot of credit here. The deflection that they've done in this entire affair to make themselves out to be the victim. Brendan allegedly says to Annie, walk me to my truck so you can give me the Gluck Gluck 4000. She remembers it midway through a podcast talking about, you know, how guys assume certain things. Brings it up in a funny, angry, frustrated kind of fuck you kind of way it's a story she's allowed to share it it happened to her just ignore it and keep it moving Kalala jumps on the back of it and says hey that same person also said into my dms knowing full well that he has a wife and i have bobby lee you could also ignore that it's their story to share too because you got them involved or if you're a decent person, a man with actual morals and integrity and principles, and maybe you let your, you know, your whiskey um, haze get the better of you, you say, you know what, I, I stepped out of line there. Let me contact both individuals, if I can, in my own way, and say, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I did there. And maybe if I'm even a really, really amazing person, I want to make some changes, I go out and say in public so I can make myself accountable to people and say, you know what, I messed up here. I heard what people have been saying there. I didn't really want to do that. So, hey, let's move on. 
or you know, allow me the space to try and be a better person. I make a lot of mistakes. I didn't want this to be something I remembered about. Whatever, you do something along those kind of lines. That's what a normal person does. And especially off the back of this. But Billy goes on a podcast, H3, and bears his soul, you know, unwillingly. He didn't want to do it in the first place, but he reluctantly does it. Not he reluctantly bears his soul. He's really offended. He's hurt by it. He feels like he's being bullied. I'm sorry, Bobby Lee. I made a big mistake. My bad. I really fucked up. I feel horrible about this. I didn't want to put you in this situation. And it's all my fault. I'm sorry, Kalila, for what I said and did to you. I'm sorry to my wife. Like, nothing. He hasn't even apologized to, again, maybe it's not our business to know this, but has the Mexican got an apology this whole time? Have we seen him make a public apology to the Mexican? Because he you know, essentially publicly embarrassed in some way, shape or form. Has he apologized to his family online? No. We just saw a video of him crying for people thanking him for his comedy special. That's what we saw. Sobbing on the camera because of the comedy special. We see him sobbing on the camera when Chris Lee gets accused of diddling kids. <laughs> but then when, when that video came out of the Mexican flippings, allegedly there's a video coming out when he's recapping the Mexican's grandma died. That was no emotions she miscarriages he goes on tour i can't believe i was fans of these guys man there's a time where i legitimately was fans of these guys i can't believe it i can't believe it i honestly can't believe i was fans of these guys <laughs> wow through all this i think you know i've obviously made mistakes too the way i handled it with kalila not so it's really not Bobby. It's more me and a Kalila thing. And what I learned, you know, I don't know her that well, but even though I don't know her is I should went directly to her. Yes. Instead of going anywhere else. This I wasn't went to you her. saying getting your bitch in line though. This was, this uh, was not, that, I don't that was how I don't it was, talk like that was that. how it was characterized. No, this not, had nothing to do with, for me, it had nothing to do with Kalila. It had nothing to do with, with it had, this had to do with seeing that long-term harassment, Valley, yep. according to these sources said it's coming. One of the main sources is coming from there. And I went, what? But but uh, but you know, you, you I want I want our fans go, to realize oh how God. toxic that group is. The well, they know. The radicalized. Hey guys, if you have any doubts, if you have any doubts, go look at it. Yeah, the radicalized. No. But then also, go look at you it. know the reason that account got flagged in the first place for for it to get to me, a guy who ignores it, for it to get, because it hurts my feelings. Not because yeah. I'm better than social right. media or Reddit groups. The reason it got notified is because there's a video of this man beating his son who is six years old with autism. That's when it crosses. That that's what you're dealing. That's with. when you realize who these some of these people are. Some, not all, some. A majority of them. And then the the main five six counts that are doing a lot of this harassment, over the top criminal activity. They look in the background. It's an ongoing investigation. There's pedophiles. There's horrible stuff yeah, in there. That's man. right. So let's. This is you, let's this leave, is not something you want to be very general about into. that. What are these people talking about? What are these people talking about? <laughs> I don't, what are these people talking about? What are these people honestly talking about? Can someone explain what they're talking about? So what are they? Are they trying to? Are they trying to spin it that somehow the firing the kids subreddit is home to is harboring ped pedophiles and child abusers? in the hope that they can use that as a justification to get the subs shut down. Is that what they're trying to do? They're trying to paint that all the people that post clips of Brendan fucking up ad reads, of not remembering the fight cards, of looking like he's not interested when he's talking about fights, where he asks people questions in interviews and doesn't let them answer, where he's ragdolling topics in his own podcast, where he's giving stories about himself that clearly lies, where he's talking about his tour and how funny he is and what shows he's selling out and not selling tickets. All these things that people are uploading on a constant basis, they're going to use, they're going to find the odd freak in a group of 60,000 people and use that as a justification to get the entire sub shut down. You got to give it respect. You got to respect it. You got to respect the game. What a superb way to deflect and to refuse to accept any responsibility for the toxicity that you create. Brilliant. Bravo. Bravo. 
Holy smokes. Now I know why I remember back in the day, a few months ago, somebody on the Friday Kids subreddit was saying something like, oh, um, they heard through the grapevine that there's an investigation into the sub happening and they're going to be trying to take it down. I think that's why people stopped saying the actual term redacted, which would, yeah, what would actually you meant to say, I mean, the R word, they stopped saying that sort of slur on there because there were threats or there were suggestions that they were going to take that sub down. It was going to get deleted or it's going to get, you know, archived or something, whatever, quarantined, whatever they do with those kind of subs. Now we know why, because this is what these guys were doing. God almighty geniuses of avoiding responsibility, man. If you thought women didn't like accountability, stand-up comedians on another level. People say mean words online. They hire PIs <laughs> and um, cybersecurity firms to dig into subreddits. But then if they dare to say a joke about trans people, about LGBTQ plus people, people with disabilities or whatnot, or something along those kind of lines, or they make some disparaging comment about rape or whatever, it's just a joke, man. Don't be talking so serious, man. Free speech, man. But the moment people online poke fun at them, call them names, just words online again, online, just words online. They don't have any weight unless you put weight or power into them. They all start quivering. What an amazing group of people they are. Truly some of the best that humanity has to offer. Don't you think? The best of the bunch. What more could you want out of life than a group full of comedians who feel entitled to police and to um, limit people's speech, how they're reacting on the internet with the stuff that they're saying? What else do you need in life but a group of you know, self-aggrandizing comedians who feel as if they walk on fucking water because they get on stage and tell some shit jokes in comedy clubs across the United States or some of them who have the weird idea that somehow because they tell jokes on stage that it makes them part of, you know, the... I don't know, it, it makes them just like everybody else, every other regular person out there. No, it doesn't really, mate. You're still part of the privileged few. You're still in the 5, 10, 1% of your flipping tax earning or earning potential bracket, you absolute numb nut. These, these, honestly, these people think because they perform in comedy clubs that it makes them just like the everyday man. The everyday man doesn't have the ability that you do to silence people. Like, God almighty, man. Fuck me. Frank Lampard gets accused of being somebody who only scored loads of deflected goals. But I think these guys are the masters of deflection. They are the masters of it. They just shoot at a flipping, you know, into defenders in front of a goal and just hope it pings into the top corner and wrong for the goalkeeper. That's what they're doing, mate. They're not even trying to slot it in the corners. They're just trying to hit a crowd, hit a leg, hit a limb, hit a shoulder, hit a head, and then it goes in. Because I don't That's what I'm doing. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I just want you to realize that this goes be. You want to criticize my comedy, my stand up, my fight picks, my, the way you and I engage? Yeah, have at it, man. Sure. But when and you, there is stuff to criticize there. This, the, We're going to make this the podcast world, that, better. That's the, that's the world we live I've in. I've been though. too protective of this guy. You know, he does interrupt. He does fucking you know talk down sometimes. He he does behave in an arrogant way, which is the defense mechanism for him. It just is. But we're going to get back to shit, man. We're going to, you know, I said to him, I go, we got to get back to getting you and I having conversations that are go beyond ourselves. Correct. Fucking picking up on fucking rhythms. And what a good time to funny. do it, B. What a good time to do it because, you know, Chappelle went off on his own. He's building his podcast and he's headlined his own shows. Yeah. And so now it's just us, Bubba. Yeah. It's uh, it, so it's just it again. I love how Brendan, sorry, Brian elaborated and stopped and said, no, you, you are sometimes a terrible person. I can get what people don't like you basically in a roundabout way. But Brendan's like, that's the internet. He didn't even want to claim his spot. That's a good insight into his inability to see anything wrong in the way that he's maybe presented himself online. Can we say for one way or some, you know, let's be honest and say, is the Fire and the Kids subreddit toxic? Of course it is. Like most communities on, on Reddit, when it comes to fan communities, there's going to be a toxic element to it. It just is what it is. But I always said most of the subreddits that are the most toxic are mostly toxic because of the guest, or sorry, because of the person who starts the show. I think of a good example being H3H3 subreddit at a, at a time was toxic. Um, there was a time when the Bon Appetit crew, that whole, you know, kitchen thing was toxic because of what they were going through. And another good example was Call Her Daddy podcast. 
that subreddit was extremely toxic when those girls were breaking up and going through their drama and, you know, the constant sort of like trolling and, you know, clickbaiting stuff that the host does now at the moment is mostly born from the host. That's where it comes from. So the fact that he's not taking any accountability of why maybe he has contributed to this is absolutely wild. He can't get it through his head why people don't like him. Like Brendan doesn't understand it at all, doesn't get it. I don't interrupt too much. That's just the way I am. I'm cool. I'm brilliant. I'm, I'm, I'm amazing. Like, he doesn't even think his fight picks are bad. It's just all good. He's beyond help, in it? Back to the original crew. Yeah. And I'm so excited for it. You see the new thumbnail. We have new intro coming. So there couldn't be better timing. Dude, can I get better as a podcast, even though I've been doing this 10 years and I have my 10,000 hours? 100%. Do I make mistakes? Are you kidding me? You can get better. I make and, all the mistakes. And stand up. But you know, you, but, he said to me everything. with the pot, with the special, he, he called me and he goes, I just, I just, all I wanted to do was just sh show myself and the people close to me that I've gotten better, that I've been working at this. It's so fucking hard. Stand up is it's hard. the hardest job in the it's world. It's so hard. And, I, and, 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 you know, a, and, you know, it's a, the hardest job in the world, but B, to do a special and do it on your own and rely on your team. And then we have to deal with all the, the marketing and the, all that stuff with it. Yeah. Like I didn't realize what an animal it is. Look, it's, man, it was such a beast. It's all one continuous mistake. And so is life. You know, I made a mistake. I will pay for that. And I will do everything I can to make it up to somebody I love named Bobby Lee. And, and I've only met Kalila once, but she didn't deserve that shit either. So uh, she seems like a great person. From what I could tell, she seems like a very fair, good person. Bro, so, and, and I'm going to tell know, this to her in her face. I told mm -hmm. her this on the phone. Dude, you want to talk about a smart, educated? Like I told her, like we got done, but we said some things we both probably didn't mean. Then we finally got through that and really yeah. had some growth. And I told her, I went, man, I know you do this podcast thing. You're crushing. If you ever wanted to be a lawyer, you would crush it. <laughs> I'm savage. Yeah. Savage. Yeah. And so in a I, good way. Yeah, savage and, in a good way. And I hope that, I hope that, uh, I hope I can get some, uh, anyway, that's all I have to say. I, 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 also, I own it and this, I take this, responsibility. This other thing, and let's move on after this, and hopefully I can go on Tiger Belly and we squash all this. Because what I don't like to do is the clickbaity drama pot. I don't like that. It doesn't no. make me feel, it's not what I want to do. Well, especially I, big, I'd rather have people that I'd I, I, rather I, have yeah. 50 views yeah. than a million and deal with this negativity yeah, all the time. It's not what I do. Why does he feel like he's owed a platform to go and speak to someone to like, they shouldn't let him on the show, man. These guys are talking absolute shit. Why does he feel like he's owed an opportunity to go on there and talk to them on their platform when he can't even just say, sorry, we do the hardest job in the world. So what? Is that why you sit into her DMs? He's my friend. I got love for him. Is that why you barked on the phone to somebody you've known for 20 plus years in the industry because you felt like he was offending one of your friends? What? Then he got on the phone and started what? Um, giving Kalila compliments that she's a lawyer because what she can argue. Because what? Yo, these people are redacted with a capital R, bruv. Maybe all caps the entire thing. This is insane. This is insane. These people are legitimately the worst humans I've ever seen in my entire life. Online. You know, not in, not in real life because I've met some dodgy people. I've got some bizarre uncles and aunties that, you know, will give these guys run for their money. But online... Am I am I am I mentally unstable? Or is this pretty easy to to resolve? You messed up in a really big way. They brought it to the public. Unfortunately for you, it's embarrassing. I get it. You deal with it directly by on by opening up and admitting your faults and saying you're sorry, or you do it publicly and admit your faults and say you're sorry and tr and say you're going to promise to do better. You draw a line underneath it and you move on. This doesn't mean you're going to have to do shows and you go on there and they come on the fire and the kid and you pretend you're all kumbaya. Nah, man, you already showed your ass. You already showed them what you're about. That you're willing to bully a, a fellow comedian because he dared to be... a f No, because no, he didn't even do anything against Bobby Lee. It's not even him. Kalila dared to speak about a situation that happened to her. She has every right to speak about. It's embarrassing. It doesn't make you look good. But then you bully the guy for what reason? What did he have to do with it? 
I just can't get my head around this apology. 22 minutes of deflection and cap and misdirection and nonsense, bruv. This is absolute BS. The height of BS. Wow. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah. It's not what we do. Yeah. It's not what I do. Let me button this up. We're going to put this to bed right now. We got other stuff to cover. We got mm-hmm. This is a big podcast. We got a lot of shit to cover. It's Cat's last fun. day. Cat's last day. day. We yeah, love Cat. it's my last day. I feel like I'm graduating. I feel like everybody's jumping ship. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's Cat's last let, day. Let then me, Christian got a new job, yeah, full-time let, gig. Let me he, button he this up. He moved on. Yep, let me button this up. Let me say this one more time so there's no confusion. Bobby, I'm sorry. You were 100% right. I was 100% wrong. There are no excuses. There are no excuses with the way I spoke to you. You didn't deserve it. And I, I apologize unreservedly. I was an asshole. I was not the guy I want to be. And I deserve the criticism. So if you guys want to hate me, bring it. I deserve it. And I agree. And that's all. That's the best I can do. I'm sorry. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to do better always. And I'll always be fucking honest with you guys. I will always own up to my bullshit. And I. And and because I can't sleep otherwise. I don't live. I don't live my life otherwise. No, and, all this is so. And toxic. thank God, Bobby accepted my apology. But he's fucking angry, and he deserves. To it's be. gonna take time, brother. And then I, I, I'm. i talked to him today and just show him how so. much you love Tell him. Tell him I love you him. You know. Yeah, I know. Who doesn't I'm, love him? Yeah, no, he's the best, man. He's always been so nice to me. Now it let's. Such a long yeah. Ways. Now let's get into a podcast. Chin, I'd like to get, I'd like to just. Oh, quickly there. Big up um, Dax Trekker, but sorry, Dax Terak for the $5 super chat. I appreciate you, my friend. Big up says I'm doing the Lord's work. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, because this is abusing my ways of comprehension and my brain. It's just horrible. So, Brian apologized profusely way more than Brendan did, who is the sole reason why this whole thing started in the first place. Brian apologized in a really weird, profusely, profuse way, more so than Brendan did who started this whole thing in the first place. Am I getting that right? He started off the apology. He's the one that ran into it. He ran into the topic. Full full steam. He tried to defend himself and explain why he did what he did. Came out terribly, but he tried. Then tried to end it by emphasizing that he fucked up. Still, terrible apology. Maybe one of the worst. It will go down in the Hall of Fame as one of the worst apologies I've ever seen in my entire life. And Brennan just let it go. Just didn't say a thing. And acted like he was cool. He was the nice one. He was the one that was mediating. Mediating? It's your f- it, it's your fault, mate. It's your fucking fault. Why are you mediating things that you caused? <laughs> I don't understand this. I don't get what's going on here. This is insane. Is this similar to like beating somebody up close to an inch of their life, driving them to hospital... And then helping them through the police interview to try and find out what happened. Is this the same sort of thing? Yeah, I'm done, man. I'm done. I'm done. I'm I, And they didn't explain either what's happening with Unix. So what what why are you suing Unix for? Is Unix what? Is Unix one of the users on that subreddit? Is that why? Why is Unix getting subbed? Why is Unix getting sued? Because he dared to highlight a video where Brennan's allegedly passing a note to some woman that isn't his wife. The Mexican doesn't get an apology. And he doesn't get a public apology. His friends don't get a public apology for putting him in that situation. Kalala doesn't get a public apology. Bobby Lee doesn't get a public apology on his on his platform. But he's gonna he's gonna try and do it on theirs. <sighs> Yo, I think I'm done, man. I can't do this anymore. This is legitimately hurting my brain cells and it's making me hate humanity and I don't want to hate humanity. We've seen so many great displays of humanity over the last, what, few months or maybe years, especially during the pandemic, especially now more so with the 
countless wars that are happening all across the world. You know, most recently with what's been going on with Ukraine and Russia, we've seen so many great displays of people legitimately putting some of their differences aside and seeing what they can do to help people from parts of the world that they probably have never even visited, right? Um, trying their best to help people, trying their best to support them in a moment of need, even if they don't have much. And then we got this. <laughs> We well, got these guys. We got these awful guys, awful people. <laughs> oh, no wonder, no wonder Lex Friedman legitimately thinks he can, you know, kind of get Zelensky and Putin to sit down in the same room. No wonder. No wonder. No wonder. Um, what's PG said? You missed the entire point. They were talking about the tiger belly Reddit, not the homeless cats. Okay. Let's say yeah, that's true. Let's say they were talking about a tiger belly subreddit. So the tiger belly subreddit allegedly has people on there who are into some crazy stuff, right? Or look at some crazy stuff, whether it's kiddie stuff whatever it may be mad stuff right that's what the, that's what's been happening over there what's that have to do with them and what happened with brendan what's that have to do with anything so what so there was somebody posting on that subreddit also posting on the fire and the kids subreddit who might be into weird subs or has got some really dodgy digital footprint what's that got to do with them does that mean you can't apologize I'm confused. I don't know. I literally don't know. Maybe I'm just interpreting it wrong because I've watched, listened to it real time. <laughs> but at least, anyway, the good thing with this, at least we got to see what they're actually like because these guys talk so much and they do a lot of posturing and they put on a front, whether it's wearing fancy trainers or driving expensive cars and posting videos of themselves in front of crowds with sold out things and whatnot. And it's all well and good, but mostly you would imagine posting all those weird self-flagellation things online is usually a way to kind of hide and protect things, right? To kind of make you seem one way when you're really the other way. Usually you would imagine. But it's good to know also that behind the scenes, away from everything, they're actually garbage humans, like horrible human beings to each other. Not even to us. Nothing new. It's not even nothing to do with me. It doesn't affect me in the slightest. I'm not I'm not dating Kalila. I'm not with Annie. I'm I don't, I'm not friend to Bobby. I don't know any of these people personally. Don't care. I'm on the other side of the planet. Or the other side of the ocean, right? Name the waters. <laughs> but you know what I mean. And they're this horrible to each other. Imagine how horrible they will be to us or people who can't add them any value. That's what I'm saying though. Imagine, right? They're horrible to each other. People they've known for years, people who can legit add value to their lives, could add a bit of clout to them, who can give them the opportunity to make some money and do whatever. Imagine how much horrible they, they could be or worse they could be to people who can't give them anything. Crazy, man. Honestly, one of the most craziest things I witnessed in real time. Callan called Bobby in a fit of rage, trying to protect Brendan, defending his honour, while he's what, stroking his dick, while he's on the phone to flipping Bobby Lee, is that what he's doing? He's got flipping Brendan's balls and his nuts as he's calling Bobby Lee's best friend and berating him for what? For being a part of a subreddit that might have some uncharacteristic people on there. Huh? So what? Have you been on the flipping internet? So is Bobby Lee, um, so is Bobby Lee Alex O'Hanahan, really? Is that his name? Alex O'Hanahan, however you pronounce his name, the founder of Reddit, who's now the husband of uh, Serena Williams. Is that who actually is the founder of Reddit? Not the Alex guy. It's actually Bobby Lee. The Alex guy is just like posturing and pretending he is the founder of Reddit. But the real genius we all know is Bobby Lee. <laughs> the guy who put a screen in between him and his guests during the height of COVID that still had room for virus to fly over it, so protect himself from COVID. That's the guy. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Makes sense, man. Makes sense. 
look, man, I, I'm done. I, I'm legitimately done. I can't do this anymore. This is hurting my brain. It's an insult to my intelligence. I will have a little I have of it. I can deduce when people are talking out their ass. I can deduce when people are unwilling to accept any responsibility. The funny thing at the end there about the show, you know, everyone running away and jumping ship. Chappelle jumping ship to do his own thing and do more backflips on stages and Kat deciding to go probably incredibly full time with OnlyFans and smash that um, Shrimp, is that Shrimp? Is it Chris? Or whatever that person is, Shrimp him deciding to jump ship also and do his own thing everyone's leaving <laughs> it seems like and they'll only have each other to you know uh, interrupt and to berate and all that nonsense, it's just what a weed doing here honestly what are we doing here honestly i just can't i just i just can't get by that, that apology <laughs> explaining that they're tough guys that they fight that brendan his bottom that all that kylan's a bottom for brendan <laughs> even shrimp even shrimp is leaving shrimp is leaving mate he can't see himself doing full time fetching flipping Brendan's whiskeys <laughs> and being insulted for his flipping um his his height. Uh anyway, I'm done man, I'm done.